Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 438. I'm Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, friends. It's so good to be in this studio today, and especially because it's sunshiny outside. <laughs> We've had lots of, of rain and storms, and uh, we sure are upholding all the people that, that lost homes. There have been some horrible tornadoes um, down in Arkansas, and there's been some damage you know, to homes and things here in, in Missouri and other, other states. So we ask you to join with us and just ask God to help in those situations. And a lot of people just lost their whole home. It was very destructive. And I think we can all see that the storms are getting stronger. I tell you, the other day I was, I was caught in a, a hailstorm up in town, and it, it was sparse as far as hitting it. But, I mean, some of them were the size of softballs, and I felt like I was dodging mortars trying to get home. Well, they uh, showed last night there was some, like, size of a palm of hands that it hit. Yeah. Uh, but we've just been so thankful because God provides us safety. Us. Steph was with the boys somewhere when uh, we had big storms coming through, and so I was asking God to just clear a path for it. And I, I watched on the radar because they were giving, you know, updates because there were hailstorms and everything. And she is, where she went was just a cleared-out path. And God's been so faithful to us and protect us. And um, it's it's an interesting time we're living in. Uh, what God's been talking to me about this last week, and, and he's talked to me about this for a while, but I think... I think there's going to be some things that he reveals that that we can pray about, about coming out of Egypt. Um, Because I think there's some parallels to when God delivered his people out of Egypt and then when they were in the wilderness and getting ready to go into the promised land. And um, it's said that, uh, you know, that there was a new Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph when he was there. Yeah. And... uh, the new Pharaoh saw that the people of Israel were more and mightier. And so he set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. And um, you were telling me when we were talking about this this week that um, there's there's a new Pharaoh setting up. You know, actually yesterday, I think I told you this last night, that Klaus Schwab, who's the father of the World Economic Forum, is stepping down as head of the gathering of global elites after a hefty 53 years. He's not disappearing completely. He'll transition to the role of board chair ahead of the next Davos in January 25. And so that's I think that's significant. And I think it's a really good time for us to pray. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's, I think there's a, a, a lot of different pharaohs that are coming uh, on the scene. You know, people don't realize in the time of Joseph, there were two Egypts. There was northern Egypt, which he was a part of, and there was southern Egypt. After the time of Pharaoh, or of Joseph, the Pharaoh of the south rose up and conquered the Pharaoh of the north. And so he had, this Pharaoh had no idea of what had, what had transpired with Joseph, the people of God, or anything else. And so he had absolutely no respect for them. I mean, the, the, the Pharaoh of, of Joseph's time, when Israel died, he and Egypt went up and mourned. He cried all the way up to the promised land where they buried him in his land. He loved him very much. And I, I think there's a type and shadow that at the beginning of our nation and the beginning of what we would call modern Western society, there, there is a, a Protestant ethic that established Western society. I think even more so than the Greek and the Roman influence and everything else. But we have, a, we have new pharaohs coming on the scene that do not respect that. In fact, they see it as an impediment to what they want to do. And they're rising up. And one of the things, as, as we were beginning this, God told me, and I think it's not just with the storms, we are entering into a time of extremes. I believe that. Because the, the enemy is turning up the heat. He, 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 he desires the one world government. He will, they will do anything. They will create anything they need to do to cause fear. Because fear and deception are the currency of hell itself. Well, and they, you know, 
the truth is, is that we've put ourselves in a bad position here by the decisions in our nation and the abortion issue to where God's lifted his hands. You know, he can stop things. But he's trying to get our attention. <coughs> he's trying to get people's attention right now. And before we go on, I forgot to, to mention about a little recall issue. When we had our last um, conference, we had little bags that kids could put things in, and there were these little mini magnetic doodle boards. And uh, Amazon sent out a... Uh, an email that said our product safety team has identified that the pro- product uh, may present a substantial product hazard because it has not been approved in accordance with the mandatory safety regulations. So it doesn't give anything like that there's something could pop off. It doesn't say that. They just didn't go through the rigorous safety standards. So they, they are just urging everyone to throw those away. So if you guys had just pitched those, um, just in case there's something going on with them. And uh, Steph's going to send out an email to all the people that were at the conference uh, just to let them know. So sorry about that, guys. Just pitch them, and and, uh, we'll plan things down the road that hopefully will be through this safety commission. (laughs) But go ahead. I'm sorry I had to interrupt. No, I think we're entering into a time of extremes. So the enemy is going to turn up the heat. But the word says that when the enemy comes in, now there's two ways of reading this because there's no, there's no apost- uh, commas in Hebrew. It can either be read, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against them. Or when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against them. Either way, what we, what we see in that verse is when the enemy comes in strong, God's going to move strong too. Mm-hmm. So we're, go- we're going to see times of extreme from the enemy but I think what God is going to do is God is going to move in kingdom extremes, and that's some of the things that we're going to talk about to position ourselves to be extremely kingdom, because that's the only thing that's going to be able to withstand the tsunami from of darkness that's getting ready to hit planet Earth. Well, I, I think that's right, and I think we can learn so much by what happened when they came out of Egypt. I think the the great news is because there was such an anointing there that God had to deliver his people that... There was no sick. Mm-hmm. And you know that there was sickness there because they were, I mean, absolutely beating them, you know, to, to and, where and put and such burdens them on the them. Right. Um, and also they came out with all the wealth. And you had said that, um, you know, all of the things that they had gained on the backs of God's people, you know, they, they came out of there with. Yeah, when, and they, when, because they built two big, big cities that were treasure him. cities. Mm hmm. And when, Python and Ramses. And, and when Exodus you look well. at it, there, there were several things going on with the nine plagues that God did. Number one, every single one of them was a judgment against one of the gods of Egypt. Uh-huh. Two, when you, it's like halfway through the plagues, they would, you know, it's like, okay, we got lice. Well, look, look, I can create more lice. Or we have flies. Look, I can create more flies. But there comes a time, there, there, there's a point that they could no longer produce. Now, mm-hmm. they could never give relief from, but they could produce the same things. But there, there came a time when they couldn't do it. And that, that, shows, that, that, that teaches us several things. Number one, it teaches us that the enemy has supernatural power, but there's a limit to it, Mary. Mm-hmm. There's a limit there sure to it. Now, with God, he knows no limit, but That's the right. enemy has a limiter on him of what he can do. The Bible says that he cannot tempt a man with anything that is not common to man. Now, you have to take the full spectrum of human history to incorporate that. I mean, some of the things that we're being tempted with now, we, we have lost in the, in the mysteries of time, but we're very Genesis 6. I mean, high technology, all these different things. I think, that was, I think we're seeing a modern-day replication of what they had during the Genesis 6 time, which, uh, you know, if you look at it, it lasted about 900 years. And they, they, you, had, you had Nephilim and the Watchers basically controlling the world. They bring high technology with them. We're seeing the replication of that. But man's already been faced with that, and we know from like Noah that you can resist it and you can not be a part of it. That's right. That you can stay pure of it. When the whole world was, was following in with the, with the Nephilim, and the Bible says that men's minds were filled with, with darkness all the time, yet there was Noah. And I, I think what we need to choose to be is we're going to be the Noahs of our generation. We're going to be the Elijahs of our generation. We're, we're, we're going to be those that are faithful to God in our generation, regardless of how dark it gets, because the darker it gets, the, the brighter light becomes. Well, we can learn from... Uh 
what they did as they were coming out of Egypt. You know, God did this miraculous delivery for them. Then they complained, and all kinds of things were going on because um, they didn't like the manna. Then they sent them quail. It it was just a, it it, it was like trying to get Egypt out of them. God delivered them from Egypt, but it's hard hard to, and and we face that today. You know, we were talking as we were discussing all this about the tyranny of the familiar. And we've had decades now of this familiar way that we've seen the churches go in a direction. Um, we're, we've just kind of settled into, you know, kind of a lackadaisical attitude. It's just, it's just been a, that, like that frog, the water's heating up and it just stays in there till it's too hot. Um, because we're, we get familiar with what's going on. They got familiar with what was going on in oh, yeah. Egypt. And uh, what's, what's crazy, you know, cause I was thinking, you know, the life of Moses, when, uh, you know, he had a call on his life uh, from the very beginning. That's why God saved him. And at first he tried to do it in the flesh and he killed somebody. And I, I think the church has done a lot of things carnally, but they've even, the modern church has taken another step, Mary. It's like Moses. It's like if Moses is when I went down and said, "Now, Janice and Jambres, I want you to teach me how to be a priest in in, in in the mystery religions." We have so much stuff going on today in the church that is mystery religion Babylon. Boy, that's true. That it's Janice and Jambres. Now, guys, now I want you to compare this now. Before Jesus comes back, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna release the spirit of Elijah. Now, guys, have you ever? studied Elijah I mean it was it was the prophets of Baal that had the slick PR they had the best donkeys in the land they were eating at the queen's table they had the best the best they, they, they were Armani okay I mean they they were slick they had all the PR and everything else Elijah would have been equivalent of having one of the guys from Duck Dynasty being called to be a prophet and, and to face. I mean, he was a backwoodsman. He he was a wild, hairy guy that wore camel's hair, and and he was brash. Uh, he he would just simply do what God told him to do, and he didn't care about PR. He didn't care about anything. He just was simply there to do God's work, and and he was a wild looking guy. And that spirit of Elijah, when you when you function in the kingdom, it's not about slick PR. It's not about sound bites. It's about doing the will of God, even when it makes you look ridiculous or puts you, in, in a sense, in harm's way. I'm going to face off with you, and I'm going to face off against 450 prophets of Baal and another 400 prophets of Ashtaroth. And if God doesn't show up, I'm a dead man. Whew. I mean, and, and then he's the one that killed all the prophets. That, that when they failed, he killed them all. I mean, he, he was the opposite of what we would consider and what Babylon would consider sophisticated and, and very slick looking and just having the right sound bites and the, and the, and, and the right stage setting and everything else. We, we have so fallen into, into Hollywood in what we're doing in ministry. We have so fa- fallen into even protecting the organization rather than mm-hmm. dealing with sin or dealing with issues. Or, and, guys, it's, it's all getting ready to fall apart because God cannot support this. No, and he's, he's got to show us the way to get into to a better place. You know, he, he wants his body functioning um, and showing his greatness. And, you know, the more of these little clips that I see, I've been watching a couple of things um, about the prophetic and about oh, just different things, and and I I've, I've looked back and thought, oh my goodness, I saw a clip, a video where Paul Kane, which was the, um, he was one of the people involved in IHOP mm-hmm. as far as like was was he Mike Bickles, one of his mentors? Would I, you call I, it I, that, or just associated with? He him? was associated with him okay. as well as. Um, Oh, what's the name? It's, 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 um, is it Wimber? Yeah, Paul Wimber. Okay. And was instrumental in, in those things as well as the, the formation of, of uh, the stuff that Peter Wagner did. And uh, I remember when we went up to one of the conferences, and, you know, if you're, if you're prophetic, 
you get around the prophetic and it kind of burns in you. Uh-huh. It's, it's, yeah, you'll witness. With you'll witness to what's going on. And we went up there, and I mean, not only nothing. was well, not only was it nothing, it was negative. Yeah, it was. And on this clip, it had Paul Kane uh, calls out jo- a young Joseph Prince, and it's given him this great prophetic word, and. We've seen the teachings of Joseph Prince, and my goodness, it's very concerning. Hyper grace, yeah. Um, and so, you know, um, I found out too on one of the clips that Derek Prince had been to IHOP years ago to warn them, and I think that was disregarded. And John Deere tried to too, didn't he? I, I or can't wrote rem- a letter or something, and they, they didn't receive it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's confusing to the body of Christ because Paul Cain would have these, you know, these uh, very accurate prophecies like about earthquakes and specifics right to the, to the T. And so every, everybody was considering him one of the great prophets. And so, you know, that I read a letter where I think it was Rick Joyner uh, said that they were having to um, turn Paul Cain over to discipline for the church because they went to him individually him and and some others and when he was um struggling with alcoholism and homosexuality and so you look at you look at that and in the same letter now rick joiner was was praising him for all the contributions to the body of christ and i guess what's confusing for most people as as it is me is is that a spirit of divination that is making these accurate things? Was it never from God? Is did he have a prophetic gift and and got into sin? I mean, it's really hard, and it's hard to, you know, you just kind of want to leave it alone. And I can tell you, you're you're my witness to this. Back when we came back from that Passion for Jesus conference, where Mike Bickle and Paul Kane were there, and I've told you before, I went thinking, man, if these guys are prophets. Uh, if there's anything God wants to call out on me, I'm going to go up there and just say, God, correct me, you know, if, I, if I'm not hearing you right. And there was nothing. And as a matter of fact, they were doing these bucking movements or something, and it just made my stomach sick. So First, first conference I couldn't wait to get out of. Well, and I was, I was really looking forward to it. I thought, we're going to learn some stuff. And so um, while we were there, I've told you that they wanted you to gather in groups and pray for each other. So I had the two girls with me. You hadn't got up there yet. And I said, we're just going to be our own little group. Don't let anybody, we're not going to, I'm not going to let anybody lay hands on us. Because I just felt sick. And now, keep in mind, this is during this process where I'm trying to figure out what's going on with me, what in the world is happening with uh, with everything. And so I didn't take serious anything that I felt or, or saw. And what I saw when I got home was Mike Bickle and his tongue came out of his mouth and it went like crooked, like upstairs. It was like, and well, God gave you a vision of that. Yeah. And so, um, and you had no idea what to do with that. Well, and I, I wisely didn't do anything with it. Uh, now I, I'm sure based on what I see God do with me now that he was wanting me to pray for him, but I just discounted it because I thought, who am I to think that there's something wrong with one of these people's got these big ministries and, and, um, so I just I just told you, I told our family, and I said, I'm just going to shelf this. Um, and what I should have done is prayed, because obviously we know now something was going on. Um, but it, but it's, it's not an easy thing to know what to do with the prophetic. Um, now I think I, almost everything I see is, is God show me something he wants me to pray about. But, I mean, it's really, it's a... Sticky situation when you're seeing something about, uh, you know, another minister or something like that. And tell you the truth, Mike can tell you, there's many things through these last 30 years that I've seen. It shocked me that God showed me. And I've shelved those and prayed because it's not my place. I'm not in a position to to try to even figure out what I'm seeing. I know it's real, um, but I'm just praying because... I think it's so dangerous. I, I honestly think we're in one of the most dangerous times that's ever been because we need a, a pure prophetic stream. And, and how do you get a pure prophetic stream? It goes back to holiness. You know, we, we forget 
What Moses taught the people of God, now everybody remembers, if somebody prophesies something and it doesn't come to pass, then they're a false prophet. What do you do with Isaiah that some of the things he was prophesying happened three or 400 years later? So, I mean, you've got to balance that. But Moses said, listen, if, you know, if, if he prophesies, you know, something's going to happen on such and such a day and it doesn't happen, then cast him out, don't believe him. But he, we, we stop there. But he says, listen, if the guy comes and every single thing he says comes to pass, but he leads you into another direction, either by what he's preaching or his lifestyle, leads you away from the ways of God, he's a false prophet. And God says, now why did I let this happen? Because I'm testing you to see if you love me more than you do signs and wonders. And see, we, we have entire uh, what you would call revivalists that are all about signs and wonders to where they worship signs and wonders. And, you know, the Apostle Paul said signs and wonders are for, un- for unbelievers. I don't need a sign and a wonder. I don't need to be entertained. What I need to hear is the Word of God, mm-hmm. and then I need a prophetic word if I'm, if I'm going to be released into something or if I need correction because I see the true prophet. When you look at the Navi in the Old Testament— they would give the deepest teachings out of the Word of God because they, as a, as a prophet, they understood the heart of God. And when, when you have people that are supposed to be prophets and they can't teach their way out of a wet paper sack or preach their way out of a wet paper sack, that does not fill the, the biblical model of a Navi. I mean, a, a, a true, and I've even seen some of the greatest sermons that Spurgeon ever preached. He was very prophetic in what he was doing. I mean, he would call out supernaturally people's sins, what they had done the week before. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I hate allergies. And, and, and he would call them to repentance to where they would be brought to their knees in repentance. And the modern church doesn't like repentance. They want warm fuzzies. Warm fuzzies are the way that Babylon does things. They will give you warm fuzzies while they feed you their poison. And, and I'm having trouble with a, a, a lot of different movements. I mean, we've watched a lot of different videos, and we have a lot looking at all the crazy stuff that's going on uh, with the prophetic movement or with movements like Bethel and many others. And, and you know, you and I, I've said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, that's not right, because they cherry pick things for their yeah, position. they do. They do. Um, and so it, it's because, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I've read everything that John G. Lake has ever written. In fact, at one time I had his unpublished works. I think they got damaged when we had that flood mm. back in, in Dixon. But uh, Wilfred read it, his son-in-law. I was able to get all his unpublished works and read through them, so I knew everything that was about him. And I see them cherry-picking things about him when, I mean, he about starved to death on the mission field because he was so dedicated to what God called him to do. And they because they're cessationists, they don't, they don't want – the, the move of God uh, as far as signs and wonders. And, and I do believe that, you know, signs and wonders are true. But, I mean, uh, I'm seeing things with cessationists that get into hyper grace or they get into once saved, always saved, and now that you're saved, you can sin and still make it to heaven, which is the opposite of what the Word of God has to say. We need to realize whether we're in the Hebraic movement, the Baptist movement, the Pentecostal movement, all the way across, that we have all messed up that we have let Babylon oh, come yeah. in yeah. in one way or another. And God is calling us to a time of repentance and back to the full counsel of God's word. Well, if you look back, though, the, the one thing that concerns me, and I, and I know God's dealing with this on a worldwide level, but, you know, you don't want to come against someone that might, <laughs> might be flowing with God. And, and if, you don't, if you don't have enough information on them, it's easy to just take what they're saying and unless you're a researcher and can can match what they're saying, you know, line it up with the Word of God, like somebody like me, back in when I first started, I did not know the Word of God, and so um, I I wasn't going to say anything about these people. I mean, we saw no telling what we saw churches where we know that the leaders were in the occult. I mean, we we saw a ton of stuff. Yeah, we did. But but to me, um, it wasn't hard to stand against the demonic at all. It, it just wasn't. God had placed um, faith there for that with me. 
and I made my stand and I wasn't budging. What was what's hard, I think, for all of us is being an absolute oddball in the body of Christ, because because most people were following this stuff. I mean, they are, in the charismatic movement, they are following all of it. Yeah, they are. And unless something comes up like a Mike Bickle event, and unless something comes up where where you know there's there's proof now that there's something going on, it's like you're coming against the Holy Grail. And and it's just, you know, unless you'd be so secure in that. I, I didn't have a position to do anything anyway other than pray, but but I'm just saying I, I think a lot of what people are are thinking is prophetic is coming from a spirit of divination. You know, and, I, and it can say things that are right. Yeah. You know, a spirit of divination can read somebody's mail. Oh, but it I, doesn't mean it's coming from the Spirit of God. I remember, uh, and this was the book, uh, Charismatic Memory uh, Ministry by Gordon Lindsay, which is the one who established Christ for the nations. And he had heard about this guy that was supposed to be a prophet, and I think the guy was more like an Edgar Casey. okay? When, and Edgar Casey was a guy that was a Presbyterian minister that went into spiritism and, and became a real prophet for the other side. And you know he gets there, and the guy kind of materializes in the middle of the stage, whether it was sleight of hand or whatever. And he said he called him out and started telling him, this is what's going on in your life. This is how much money you have in your pocket. I mean, this, I mean, all this accurate stuff. And he said the whole time, he said, I refuse to come into agreement with him. He said, because I knew the spirit of what he was doing. Yeah, now. And it, it would have affected him. And if he had come in line with that spirit, he said it would have contaminated yep, me and contaminated my ministry. That's why I'm so weary of people laying hands on other people, because what I've seen in a lot of the clips is I've just been trying to do a little research on the prophetic and, and uh, is I see them laying hands and prophesying over somebody. And it's, it's almost like a weird thing. They take on, um, they take on certain looks of the people. They take on, certain accents and, and there's a familiar spirit yeah it? it's getting transferred and so um i just think it's it's <coughs> something we've really got all of us need to be praying about for a pure prophetic stream and that and that for god's exposure to continue yeah. um and, and that a, and he a pure deal ministerial with stream not, not just prophetic but right. teaching of the word in every area in every area we need we, we need to get rid of this double stream uh, and, and constantly, I mean, I think people that are in ministry need to constantly look, constantly go before Almighty God and say, Father, if there's anything that I don't see, make it so clear to me I can't, I can't miss it. You know, there's that just needs to be our constant prayer because I am so alarmed. The more that I'm seeing, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of people and I don't listen to anymore because I just see how far away they've got and how it's so heartbreaking to me. And I and I love those people, and and I, I'm thankful for the truth that I I gleaned out of their ministries, but I'm just thinking, oh Father, we we're in such a mess. I'm asking you to raise up true prophetic people, true teachers of the word, so that we can we can know where we're headed. We we need to be in a, at least a cohesive um, branch for prayer. Absolutely. You know, we may be scattered all over, but we need to have some some prayer going out so that God, and we know God's exposing things. I mean, there's no telling what we're going to hear by the end of this year. There is no telling. I mean, it's just, it's it's like it, he told me years ago, it's going to bubble to the surface. He said that there's nothing can hide it. He said if the ground had to open up to reveal something, that's what he's going to do. And he's doing it for our good. He's showing us things so we can get this clear in our minds. And at the same time, I mean, I am so cautious about ever speaking something out about somebody. Um, and and the times in the past, like when I've stepped out and said, listen, this is what I'm seeing, you know, to maybe some older people that, that came through our ministry, that I, I mean, it was obvious. It, it, it wouldn't have taken a prophetic. It was obvious there was such trouble going on. And if you try to just recommend, you know, a prayer or something like that, they get so offended because they think they think that everything they're doing is of God. And I mean, it's so clear that you can see it's not of God. And I mean, a very basic understanding of the word of God would show you that. That's what worries me about places like Bethel. Yeah. And and we learned that um, up at James River Assembly, where they've had the the big controversy with Mark Driscoll, they've had um, the the leader of the Bethel Church out in California in there several times. And so, um, you know, once you see these things, it's just like they go off cliffs. And I know that we need to be praying for everybody, but at the same time, Mike, there's a 
there's a young group of people that's being raised up right now, and it is imperative that they get the truth, that they get this thing right. And so not only we didn't, do we need to pray for them, that God would shield them and, and guide them, but you know God's going to have to clear a path. Yeah, he's going to he have is. to clear a path. And, and I think one of the things that we need to say a word of, uh, of, of both encouragement and correction to the younger generation, you know, it's, it's like there's so many avenues that we can get into. We can get into the Dead Sea Scrolls. We can get into this, that, and the other. And a lot of this stuff is interesting. But for, for the younger generation, if you don't go back to the basics of knowing the Word of God. That's it, the Word. Inside <laughs> and out. You, these other things are extraneous. Mm-hmm. And the devil would have us rather be dealing with extraneous stuff. I mean, even with, uh, God's been dealing with me because, I mean, a lot of things that, that I've had to deal with, like with the Shiner Directive, all that, a lot, a lot of people would call fringe theology, okay? And I think that's, you know, I was ranked among those that are doing fringe theology with these things. And I don't necessarily consider it fringe because it's very prophetic for where we are. But at the same time, did you, you know, guys, you could know the day the Antichrist is going to show up, you could know his name. You could know the city he's going to appear in, uh, the day the UFO show up, and all this other stuff, and not be prepared because you didn't have a foundation in the Word of God. Yeah, because you can't, you can't function in God's kingdom without it. And boy, do I know that. I mean, I was stumbling through everything in my life till I found out what was going on. And you know, I remember how how lonely it felt as I was seeing the things that were going on. And and the only way I could grit it in my mind is is. Most of us have half the truth. Yeah. We see what's there with our eyes and what we're hearing with our ears. But there's a whole nother layer of stuff going on at the same time. And I lived in a town where that was happening and we saw it with our eyes. And so, and you know, most, I think most ministers would not even think that there's such a thing as um, hidden personalities. But it, it's one of the things that I've wondered even about Mike Bickle. You know, since all this stuff has come out, I've thought, does does he have hidden personalities that were doing these things on the side, and then he would try to because of the the only way that I have been able to understand how this works with the the back personalities that have been created is your front consciousness will overwrite something that's happened so that you don't remember it. There will always be an explanation. There's always something that your the front consciousness of you is going to be fed as an explanation for something that that would happen. You know, in my situation, very few times did a back personality in me come forward unless I thought my kids were threatened. And then it was like, oh, my word, who is who is this person? And you re- you remember that with a couple of incidents, and um, I'm sure I shocked the world when when I did that. Um, and then it was like what what I did in my mind is I I remembered what I said, and at the, I can tell you that at the time I was saying it, I was trying to catch it. I was I was like reaching up trying to catch myself so I wouldn't say <laughs> what I was getting ready to say, and I couldn't. It's just an override. Yeah. So then I just thought, okay, you know, I've just I just got mad and and I didn't handle it right. But that's that's how this works. That's how you can operate in a ministry and have that going on. Now, I don't know if that's what happened with Mike Bickle, but I think there's a lot of situations where they may not even remember some of the things that they that they've done. Well, I I think there's a blending. I think we have that going on. I think we have those. I think we have people that aren't even saved doing ministry. I do too. That that have learned too. how to work the system. Mhm. And, you know, I've, I've been to a lot of ministries over the years all over the place. And some of them, you could tell, man, they really love God. They love the people. And some, it was, it was all about organization. It was about, it was about they knew how to do church politics and, 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 how to, and how to build a ministry the world's way. And that's what it was about. And, and with those, it's always about protecting the system. But I believe that you can pick that up. Yeah. I believe just a general Christian is going to get an uneasy feeling. You're going to maybe Sometimes. not know what it is. You're not going to have peace with it. But these are Mike Bickle had friends yeah. very close to him that could not discern this. And I guess there's several reasons that that, that could be. Well, that also but, makes me question the prophetic around him. Or, or was it so hidden, Mike? Yeah. That nobody could pick it up, and we have seen that firsthand. Yeah. We have seen people with you know maybe you'd you'd think well that 
that doesn't look right or something like that. But I mean a total switch from very kind and you enjoyed being around them to opening up the gates of hell and some personality back there that is so wicked, it startles you. Well, I mean, even... Uh, uh I just lost his name. Uh, the one that just passed away, uh, that was dealing with the occult and darkness, wrote the dark. Oh, Russ, Russ dark. Yeah. He talked about a guy that, uh, of course, the guy had a program multiple that was high in the occult in the back. That was a, a satanic high priest, and, and but he was pastoring a, a very large Pentecostal church, and so I, I, I think all of this, where whether it's worldliness, or I, I think we have had a lot of people that, it, let's say they're, they're like Moses, they have a call to ministry, but they try to do it through Babylon. They try to do it through Egypt. They're going down and they're sitting at the, at the feet of Janus and Jembries, and okay, now how do you do this? I think we have that going on. I think we have the multiples going on. We have a, we have a plethora of different things going Lots of on. different things. Because this, this is the time the Antichrist is waging war against the saints, and it said that, that he would, for a season, wear out the saints. Well, how do you wear them out? You take away, you know, if, if, if you want to come against an enemy, you got to disrupt their communication line and their supply lines. Well, for the believer, the, the communication line is, is, is the prophetic as well as, you know, if they're so far off they can't hear from God, then the communication lines are broken down. The other is our spiritual food is the Word of God. That's what gives us strength. It's not entertainment. It's not the production of a church service. It is hearing the unadulterated word of God being preached under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that brings correction, that brings power, uh, that brings uh, insight, that will, that will absolutely change your life and change your way of thinking. We, we need to have that again. And you, you can't do that in, a, in a production. It, haven't we? we've, replaced we, we've replaced it with, with, this, with this facade and so by doing that, we are spiritually weak because we are no longer being taught the Word of God. And, and you know, I was talking with uh, Carl Gallops and, and when he was at the conference, and, and uh, he said he quit using PowerPoint, you know, like how we will use you know, PowerPoint to show the Scriptures and everything. He said because people even stopped bringing their Bibles because they, did, they didn't need to bring their Bibles because it's up on the screen. It's like, I want you to see it in your own Bible. Uh -huh. And I remember he paused for a minute as, as he uh, had everybody go, go to this verse and stuff, and he said, listen, I hear angels' wings. And there's people, <laughs> you know, uh, because it, it was a delightful sound because we have gotten so lazy that we don't get into the Word of God. You have got, and, and this is one of the reasons I've been harping, guys, you got to build a theological reference library for yourself. You're the one that's responsible. It's, 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 the preacher's job is to supplement what you know. And, you know, if, if you're really doing your job and you're being a student of the Word, you keep that preacher on his toes. You know, I, I've been in places to where, uh, you know, I, I had my, my sermons outlined, and, and, and I was going to go do a seminar, and man, I was really going to get deep. And I get up there, and the Spirit of God says, this dude's point one and two, because they're not ready for it. They're, they're so shallow, they, they can't handle it, because they have been fed cotton candy all these years, and so it's, it's like you're trying to position them to get them out of cotton candy. And then I've been at other ones where I thought, well, I'm just going to give them an introduction, and the hunger that was in the people... I mean, I could, I could feel them pulling revelation and pulling. Uh, it's like, forget my notes. We're, we're Open up your Bibles. We're getting ready to get deep into these things. And I've actually had to, uh, there was a couple of times I was, get my computer up here because we're going to take apart the Greek and Hebrew. I mean, it wasn't in my notes or anything, but it was the hunger that was there. And see, we, we don't understand that not only does the preacher affect us, but we affect the preacher. Yeah, it's a... It's, uh a group activity, so to speak. It I is. mean, it really is. There, there, there's a to real get dynamic the anointing to it. flowing. And what we have done, what if if the world is promoting a ministry, run from it. Okay. Yeah, that's the truth. And <laughs> what I, I think the problems we had back in the '90s and the 2000s was we had a we had Babylon promoting a lot of ministries, 
And because those ministries got big because Babylon was promoting them, that became the standard. And then we began having congregants demand, that's the way we want our church, because mm-hmm. that's what we're seeing. On yeah, can we have can, seen can you see the, the trap of that? It is a big trap. Because I, I think every individual ministry has a specific purpose in the body of Christ. And uh, I know uh, Carl Gallup's son, Brandon, for, for a long time, he was he was uh, associate pastor at a ministry, and he was heading up uh, a men's rehab. I mean, they were getting off drugs and alcohol and domestic violence. Oh, that's and, so needed. And it was yeah. such a powerful thing. I, I think now Carl said he's he's a he's full-time pastor now as, as a senior pastor. But, you know, there, there are churches that have ministries like that. There are churches, let's say, in the inner city that are dealing with dynamics only going on. Because whatever goes on in that city, God will raise up ministries to counter what darkness is doing in that city. And on one side of the city, it may look completely different than what's on the other side of the city. But if, if Satan can promote something like, this is not what everybody expects. Uh, and then everybody begins mimicking what somebody else is doing, thinking that'll be success when God may have called them to something completely opposite. Uh, we we end up with with a um, with a with a sense of fake ministry that's that's built off Babylon, that's not really fulfilling their calling. And do you think that there's instances where the the ministry's so big that even if they find out something's going wrong, they would try to buff you know. But for that, and try to keep the ministry going. Oh, absolutely! Uh, that's you know, you you protect the system because the system and the machinery is in place, and and you know, the, especially when uh, you know, I can't imagine, you know, some of these ministries. I, I know, I know of ministries that their 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 payroll and just to keep the lights on is like one point five million dollars a month. I can't imagine the stress that would come under that. Said okay. You know, the, the, we, we're now discovering there's sin in the camp. What do we do that if, if this comes out, all these all these families may lose their jobs? And I mean, there's all this, and and so the, it's like it's like Satan has set us up. He knows how to set a trap. <laughs> set us up where, um, you know, biblically, it, it's something we we need to be quick to repent. We need to be quick to confess. Quick to call things yeah, on the altar. Yeah, because any of us can fall, and yeah. the, and the way that we can. Stop that is just stay in that prayer place to where God can correct us and show us if we're, you know, Satan is, you know, setting a trap because he's going to try to do it over and over and over. He doesn't want anybody to make headway for the kingdom of God. And, and we're, it's like I've said, we're in a vulnerable position and only God can turn it around. But, but I'm, I'm fully convinced if we pray, we can see changes at least. I think that the I've been thinking a lot about the prophetic word that Dr. Mary Ann Brown gave me back in the early 2000s before she passed away. That she said, "Mike, when God gets done, the church is going to look nothing like it does now." And I've always wondered about that. And I think it's because we have gotten so far off that when we return back to the Bible, we're going to look really strange. It's going to be nothing. Well, you know, when we went through what we went down in um, my hometown. it's so against it's so against the grain. It's like walking upstream and the pressure's coming at you. If you don't just conform to this little idea of what our reality is and, and everything's just like this and we keep it right in this little pattern and then nobody can mess with us and our lives won't be disrupted. And um, when you have to see some things that nobody else can see that's going on, it just rocks your world. It does. But, but the good news is, is it's worth getting rocked. Mm-hmm. Thank God my world was rocked and turned upside down in every which way you can because I was lost. Yeah, we don't see the world anything like it. And, no. And it, because we know it's all a facade. It's, yep. it's all a lie. And and even the way that, <laughs> that we our lives are patterned, you know, where we we just look at TV and we just, uh, it's like entertainment across the board. And uh, we have to step back from that. We have to, to get in the Word and... Um, you know, staying in the Word to me is the greatest safeguard because there's anointing there. God can show you things. We, we learn how God operates. We can see how the devil operates. And that's, a, a, that's knowledge that can keep us from falling. It is. I'm getting ready. You know, there was a time I had cassette tapes coming out my ears, and I've got a lot of that stuff packed up from some of the old guard. 
And uh, I've just had this this desire to go back, and we, we have it over in storage in, in Seymour. I'm wanting to go back and getting some of those old tapes and converting them to MP3 to where I can have them with me and, and listen to them again. Because it, there, 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 are, there have been times in the body of Christ under some of the generals that we've had before. It was a pure word, and they paid a hard price to get there. All of them did. Derek Prince paid a hard price. David Lester Wilkerson. Sum- Lester Summer. I mean, they, they, yeah. they all were um, fought tooth and nail with what they were saying. And, you know, going back, you know, we're, we're in times of extremes. And so when you have extreme darkness, the only thing that can counter is extreme holiness, going back to the word. And, you know, I said, okay, God, what's the answer? And he kept on saying Jeremiah, uh, Joshua chapter 1 principle. And when he took me back to uh, Joshua chapter 1, there's one phrase. And one of the things that you do is when you look in Hebrew is when there's, reputa- when there's repetition, there is a purpose behind it, okay? If, it, if it's mentioned once, it's important. If it's mentioned twice, it's very important. If it's mentioned three times, it is very, it, it, they call it being brought to the superlative, like uh, the character of God, his ultimate character is his holiness. His holiness trumps everything else. That's why it's, he's holy, holy, holy. That That's brought to the superlative. Now, when we get to the, Unfolding of the book of Revelation, there's one, there's, and anytime there's a prophetic word that's of judgment, there'll be, there'll be woe to the inhabitants of Nimrod, and woe to this. Uh, we have angels going, and they're giving three woes. That's the, that is the superlative woe. It's like the prophecy is about to hit the fan, and unless you get right with God, there's absolutely no survival. Well, imagine, you, you see this process with Moses, that He's living as a prince of Egypt. He thinks like an Egyptian, not only an Egyptian, but an aristocrat Egyptian. God creates a situation that he has to go on the backside of the desert where he, he entered it in pride. I mean, you, you could not be prideful and not be raised in the house of Pharaoh. I mean, you were privileged. God takes him into the desert place. And Debar in Hebrew desert also means speaking place that God took him from a place of pride, and when he comes out of the desert, the Bible says there has never been a more humble man that has ever lived. He took him from pride to humility. And God began speaking him in the desert place, and, and even in that desert place, he wasn't fully there. You know, when, when God appeared to him in the burning bush, God said, okay, throw down your staff, and it turned into a serpent. He picked it up by the tail, it turned back. He said, okay, stick your hand in your cloak, pull it out, it was leprous. He wasn't impressed with that. You know why? He saw Janice and Jambres do the exact same thing. And he says, I can't speak. You're going to send me down there? And God says, listen, I'll tell you what to say, and you'll tell Aaron. Okay. Now, when you, when you look at the progression, for a while Aaron was doing it, and finally Aaron had to shut up because Moses was doing it. He finally gained confidence in who he was. And he had spent so much time with God that he began to think like God. There was this transformation that went on in, in Moses' life, and we see it even documented uh, in the Torah. The first four books, Moses did nothing but write down what God told him. Deuteronomy, God didn't tell him word for word what he wrote. It, it, Deuteronomy means words. He was, he was so concerned about this next generation going into the promised land that he created a Reader's Digest version of the first four books. And Moses wrote it himself. It wasn't dictated by God, yet the same phenomenon in Hebrew and the, and the Bible code and all these different things that were in the first four books are in Deuteronomy because he had spent so much time with God that God transformed the way that he thought. Mm-hmm. And, and so it, it, it transferred over. I mean, when you read the book of Deuteronomy, can you imagine writing this and, and saying, okay, now tomorrow I'm going up and I'm going up on the mountain and I'm not coming off because I'm going to die. And this is what's going to happen after I die. I mean, that's, that's all in the book of Deuteronomy. And now you're called to take the place of Moses. Now, Joshua, I mean, faithful. I mean, he was, he was like an Elisha to Elijah with, with Moses. In fact, the time that, uh, Mo, uh, you remember when Israel went up and, and the elders of Israel actually dined with God, and then Moses went up further. While, while the elders went down 
and got bored in those 40 days and created the golden calf, Joshua went up as close to the manifested glory of God as he could get without dying, and he stayed there until Moses came back down. Okay. And so you know, he, he saw what God had done through Moses and, and, and had, had saw how much Moses communed with God. But, you know, there was a, there's a process of us being reprogrammed by God because we are conditioned to think like Babylonians. We are conditioned we are. to think like yeah, Egyptians. It's all around us. And so now he's going to have to take up the reins. And there's, there's one statement that is used three times uh, in uh, Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. He said, you're going to have to be strong and courageous. We're going to have to be strong and courageous if we're going to stand against the onslaught of extremism from Mystery Babylon. That's true. It has taken over our churches. It, they, they have now built the model of ministry based upon how Babylon does it and not how the kingdom of God does it. I mean, we even have guys, you know, the one, one preacher we were listening to I really liked, and he had this other guy come that was that uh, taught that Jesus, when they were down in Egypt, he was studying mysticism down there. That's why he was able to do uh, this stuff. No and I'm way. thinking, that, that is a new age doctrine yeah. that's from the pits of hell. No, Jesus was down in a Torah-based community down in Egypt because that, that's what the Jewish people do. That's, that's their modus operandi. But guys, to stand against the tidal wave of everything telling us this is the way you're going to think. And now we're going to police even what comes out of your mouth. And you better watch your words. That's very Orwellian. Yeah, and it's calling what you're saying is the truth is hate speech. Yes. When it's actually love speech because you're trying to save people from harm. If somebody is about to drive off a cliff and you grab them by the hair to keep them from going off the cliff, is it hate or is it love? Well, there is such a thing as hate speech, but it's it's not what the no. general population is considering. No, it's not. They just think if you come against anything that, that they're trying, the agenda that they're trying to push, they call that hate speech. I call hate speech as when you're coming against a person or or someone and with no no reason and just just hating them for no reason. Yeah. And modern hate speech is you said something I didn't like. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, welcome to the club. I hear things on the news every night I don't like, okay? <laughs> But listen to this, he said, he said, be strong and courageous for this people you shall divide as an inheritance in a land that I swore to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Now God's adding very courageous, from good courage to very courageous, that you may observe according to doing to, uh, to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you do not turn from the right hand or to the left hand, that you may prosper wherever you go. We, we have forgotten we were not blessed because we have learned to flow with Babylon. We are blessed because what we do in the kingdom overrides Babylon. And even though they try to persecute it, even though they try to come against it, it is a sign and a wonder that God prospers it and yeah. they can't take away the blessing. That's true. That's the way the kingdom operates. And, and we, re, we need to return to that because there is pressure Right now, there is more pressure than you could ever believe if you're following God and marry the first ones that will turn against you are the church people because they have yeah. been, they're still thinking like Egyptians and, Bab and Babylonians. Yeah. They, are, they are conditioned to the old ways. And, and we, we, we've got to step outside of that. You know, the, the biggest foes of John the Baptist and the biggest foes of Jesus were the religious crowd. Mm-hmm. They're religious leaders because you're not with the program. You're not with our program. You're coming against the machinery that we have put together. Yeah. Let me tell you something. There's, gonna, there's some machinery that's going to have to fall apart. God's getting ready to judge a lot of things. And a lot of ministries that we thought were too big to fail are getting to crumble from the inside because it was not built upon the rock. Yeah, that's true. And it's for the sake of the remnant that that's going to happen. Is. I mean, he's, there's judgment has to come. Um, but thank God for his mercy and for his love for his people. We can, we can go right on in the middle of it. Yeah. And, I mean, God may have to take a lot of people down to Jesus loves me, this I know, yeah. for the Bible tells me so. A lot of people I've met, that's where they would need to go. Yeah. You know, that's, that's where I started out. Like when God delivered me, I'd, I started out with the basics because there's so much been taught 
that skews the basics even, the basic tenets of faith. And, and if you don't get that established, you're in trouble. You know, I, I examine everything from the, the lens of, of theology. That's, that's just the way I'm wired because of all my training. And so when I, when I look at things, we have, there, there's, there are two things going on. Number one, we can look at a lot of the Hebraic roots movement, different things going on. You've left Jesus. Jesus is the creator. He is Yahweh Elohim. That's the apostolic testimony. The moment that you leave him, you have left God and you have left the kingdom. I don't care how deep you are in Hebrew. I, I don't care if you can do it frontwards, backwards, and sideways. It doesn't mean a thing. You know, all the leaders that rejected Jesus were fluent in Hebrew. Okay? Now, Hebrew is, is very important. Understanding Greek is very important. But the moment you leave Jesus, you leave the kingdom. You do. Now we have those that would not even understand the commandments of God. But what they have done is they're guilty of idolatry because they have created a version of Jesus that will placate their carnality. Yeah, it really is. That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, Jesus will get up in your business. I mean, he looked at the, at, the, at the Pharisees and stuff and said, you bunch of snakes and vipers. And he turned to people and says, you can't get into the kingdom of God unless your righteousness is better than theirs. I mean, he, uh, he, clear, he cleaned out the temple twice. Come on now. And we need him to clean the temple. We need him to, yes. you know. And, and he, he even did that when he said, listen, I've not even come to judge the world yet. And yet he's calling out the religious. He's calling out sin. He's, he's cleansing the temple when he said, listen, I've, 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 I've come to forgive and not, and, and, and not judge. Mary, he's getting ready to come back to judge. He is coming as Messiah ben David. Well, there's so much, there's so much that uh, is getting ready to happen that we, we need the kingdom operating so that we can thrive in the middle of this judgment. You know, I, I don't have any doubt they're getting ready to release another thing like they, they did the coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have any doubt because that's, that's part of what they're doing to, to take a lot of the population out. They plan and then, you know, and then with the, uh, the jab, I, I'm over and over. How many times are we seeing these young athletes die? We got that. I think there's going to be something worse. And I think they're going. They're they're trying to control the food. Oh, that's for sure. Uh, you know, every time I see a recall, you know, that uh, you know, ten million chickens have are going to have to be euthanized. I just wonder how much of that actually ended up in the uh, refrigerators and deep freezes of the elite. I mean, there, there's there's when when you have so much of this going on. Number one, is our food industry that incompetent? that this happens and it's happening so much. I wonder if they're using that as an excuse that we can disappear all this food and it's, it's, you know, it's, well, they might be able to, but, but I think one of their um, goals is to give us such non nutritive food yeah. that we're just eating sawdust. I, I remember and this, this was back when we were pastoring down in, in Dixon uh, that one of the guys was a cattle farmer and because they're, um, you know, farmers don't rotate the crops like we used to, like it's in the Bible. You let it lay fallow over seven years that, um, the grass had no nutrients in it at all. And, and he was trying to pump vitamins down the throats of, of his cattle because they were dropping dead because they were so weak because there was absolutely no nutrients in the food anymore. Oh, we've met people though, since that are doing that now they follow the word, they, yeah. they rotate. But I'm the using pastures. that as an example that our uh -huh. food is no longer food anymore. Much of it, unless you're eating organic and you're eating whole foods, they have stripped everything from it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's like the uh, we were watching. And there's this one nutritional guy that I really like that uh, he's really done his research. They were talking about uh, poly uh, sorber poly something forty. That's like in uh, those snail snack puddings and stuff. And, you know, so many people have food sensitivities because there's like one layer of, of um, cells in your digestive tract that's that protect once you get past your stomach. And this polyasorbate stuff actually causes those to explode. Mm -hmm. and, and, well, and a lot it, of people have leaky gut. I think yeah, that both of us have experienced yeah. that. That's why we have allergies. Yeah. Because and, it gets out in your system where it's not supposed and, to and, be. And it's all because of stuff they put in the food supply. There are so mm -hmm. many things in America 
that's in our food supply that's illegal in Europe. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, when I look at what's going on in China, I see where the FDA has helped with some things. But when the FDA is now primarily funded by the pharmaceutical industry and by the food industry rather than tax dollars, uh, it's kind of conflict of interest. When you see uh, the advancement of this agenda that the elite have put out, it's gonna only God can can fix this. Yeah. Only God can fix this, and we can do our part. We can grow as much food, you know, to where we know what's in it, we know what's on it. Um, but it's going to take the power of God to restore. And it's, there's, it's, you know, as far as like people having the gluten sensitivities, there are some people that once they, <coughs> they that have gone to Europe that can eat pasta and things over there because they don't have all that junk in there. And and good news is, is you can buy pasta from Europe. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can you can get some that's over there, and it, I, I, I think, believe I it think helps. It's fascinating. You're you're allergic to wheat, but you're not allergic to wheat in Europe, but you're allergic to wheat in America. And so there's, there's a lot of things that they have done. And why, why is that happening in America? Because America, according to the elite, has to be brought down. The Constitution is in the way. The God-fearing people in America is in the way of, of what they want. And so they're, 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 I mean, that's one of the reasons why they moved all our manufacturing to China. And so, you know, it's hard to find jobs. It's hard to have, you know, find things manufactured in America anymore. And they're using our manufacturing dollar to build the weapons they're going to use to try to take us over. I mean, it, it's, it's asinine well, and there's when you a, look at what they've done. I mean, you know, it's organic food's expensive, but if you, if you get grass fed, grass finished beef, it tastes a lot different. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can tell, tell that there's, there's real stuff there, yeah. you know, and it's just different. Now corn fed beef to me tastes good, but it's not good for you. No, you it's know? what's clogging up everybody's arteries. And so we've got to, um, I think I think that God's getting ready to prepare places. I honestly think this. Uh, I'm I know I'm going to see places prepared that are safe zones, that will be self sufficient. I think the Ozarks is one of them. I think God's in the process of cleansing it right now, because there's so much debauchery and and things here that it's going to take a cleansing. But but there's hope, guys. There's hope that there's going to be a period of time before Jesus comes back. I really believe this. This is my opinion, that there's a period of time before Jesus comes back where we can, we're can we going to readily see the power of God, protect places, provide, to where the lost can say, okay, I've been told all this junk. I've been told that, that you know, aliens came, and that's where the humans were, were um you know, originated with. I've seen all these things that people have told me. But there's this one name I've noticed that changes everything, and it's the name of Jesus because every knee will bow to that. And I have never walked through anything in my whole life that that isn't true. The name of Jesus is above every name, and he's going to show himself powerful. That name is going to be used, and Satan's agendas are going to fall to pieces. And God's in the process of raising up his remnant, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And you want to learn about Jesus, you start in Genesis 1.1. It's the only way you can way understand. Through, you read all the way through uh, Revelation 21, okay? Because the, 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 Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. He came in the flesh. He's Emmanuel, God with us. The first time he came, we see half of who he is. He was Messiah ben Joseph. He came to bring grace. The book of Revelation is the fifth gospel. And it's, it's sad. It wasn't written to the world, Mary. It was written to the bondservants of Christ. Because by the time we get to the unfolding of the book of Revelation, we are so far off from who Jesus is, we've got to be reintroduced to him. And we, now we see the Christ, that because what he did is Messiah ben Joseph, he is worthy. He is the lamb who was slain yeah. that is able to take the scroll, the scroll That's of right. destiny. That's right. And only he only, he's only he is worthy to loose the seals and begin to oh. bring down Satan's power and begin to bring down the world system and begin to judge it. Only he is worthy. And he's the one who's coming back. That's right. Who's going to kosher this he's planet. He's the one we serve. And everything that does not bow down to him is going to be cut off. That's the God that we yeah. serve. And, and it he's, takes... He's coming back soon. It's, it's, it's the, we have to take the Jesus in Mark through, uh, Matthew through John and then in the book of Revelation and put them together to get a full picture of mm-hmm. him. 
And he is a force to be reckoned with. That I don't care what technologies they bring out. I don't care um, what what they bring forth. I mean, we're going to have UFO show up. We're going to have Watchers show up. We're going to have we're going to have Nephilim and super soldiers and weapons that can portal armies from one side of of the planet to the other. Uh, and there's there's even many speculate that they're they're using. Uh, CERN and, and other hydrogen colliders to to make the to turn the planet itself into a particle weapon. Uh, it doesn't matter because all he has to do is show up. Just speak and one that's word. It. <laughs> the Bible it. says, "By the brightness of his countenance, yeah. they go fire okay. in his eyes." That that's it. Why? Because he's the creator. All he has to do is to withdraw his power, and the very atoms that hold them together fly apart Mm -hmm. that's true everything is upheld by the word of his power he pulls it back in one of these days mary the bible says he's going to roll up the entire universe all three heavens like a scroll it's going to cease to exist and for a little bit we're going to be with him in eternity and we're going to watch him create a new universe with a new planet and it's going to be a lot bigger than the one that we have now because when you fit, when you calculate uh, New Jerusalem, it'd be sticking like a thousand miles outside of our atmosphere. Okay, I, I don't even think we can conceive of what it's going to be like, but it's going to be wonderful. It, it's going to be a and planet. We don't want to miss it. <laughs> it's going to be a planet that is going to hold the redeemed from Adam mm. on, all those that trusted in Him, and it's going to be a universe that the physics are different. There's no such thing as darkness. You can have a closed box and there's still light on the inside of it. That we, we I mean, it's, it's almost, can, can you believe a universe that sin, sickness, or disease has never touched, has never been in? It's going to be something to be. That this universe and entropy and, all the, and, and chaos and all those things will be a faint, memory mm-hmm. never to touch us again yeah isn't that wonderful and that we're going to dwell with him forever that's the god that i serve and so we need to to be praying and say father show us exactly how to come out of egypt and babylon yeah. in in the way that you want us to come out yeah. show I, us the path the, the the beginning of the prayer needs to be you can do anything and because you can do anything you can work on me and you can take me out of babylon you mm-hmm. can take me out of egypt help me renew my mind Show me where I'm messing up. Show me where I need to adjust my paradigms to bring them in line with kingdom paradigms. Help me see your kingdom and hear your spirit. The word of God says, my sheep hear my voice. They know his voice. If you're like saved, it's because you've already heard his voice. Because he called you mm-hmm. and you answered. It wasn't that you found God. God went and hunted you down. And put you in a headlock and said, you need to be saved. You heard his voice. That's the only reason you got saved. And because you got saved, everything, everything in you is now wired to hear the voice of God. But it will always line up with the written word of That's God. Right. And we have authority. We can tell the enemy to shut up. Oh, yeah. Every day I pray that. I'll say, you're not going to speak to me. I bind, I bind you. your power and loose the power of the kingdom of God to attune my ears to the voice of my Savior. And, Father, rewire my brain because it has, it has been rewired by the devil, and it's wrong. That's right. Help me, help me get rid of my stinking thinking. Yes. Help me, help me rewire to where I'm thinking the very thoughts of God because the Word says I have the mind of Christ, and if I have the mind of Christ, that mind now lines up with the kingdom and the Word of God. That's it. We're going to see great things. Guys, just hang in there. I know it's rough. I know that people are going through so much. But there is goodness yes. in the land of the living that God's going to show us. The Apostle Paul said, prove all things. Mm-hmm. Test everything. That's right. And that which can be tested and proven to be true, we hold on to like That's pure right. gold. That's right. Well, Father, we just loose the anointing of the Holy Spirit on every remnant member. Father, we ask that, that you would begin bringing correction Yes. And Father, you Help always us, do it Father. so lovingly. Yes. You bring correction. Father, gently bring us to where we need to be. 
Father, if we got to rework everything in our life and everything in our ministry to bring it back to publicity, Father, we ask yes, that Father. the grace yes. and the anointing would be released in us to do it so that we would take a hold of that portion of the ministry of Jesus that he has called us to and that we would be faithful to our king. Jesus asked, he said, will I find faith or will I find faithfulness in the earth when I return? Father, our heart's cry is if you find it anywhere, you're going to find it right here. Right here, Father, and give us the grace to do it, we, yes, ask. we ask. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.